You know, son, you, you're not a kid anymore. Oh, no, I go to shows. Dad, I already know all this stuff. Well, they don't teach you about everything. At shows. Okay, Mr. Smarty Bands. So just listen. When boys and girls get a little older, they start getting interested in punk and hardcore subgenres. <laughs> What's up, everyone? We have Daniel from Sorry State Records and the band Scarecrow to educate me and you possibly on Finnish Hardcore. We're going to do a Finnish Hardcore starter kit. Daniel, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm a big fan of the pod. I'm uh, stoked to be on. Yeah, dude. This is like the true punk shit, you know, where like sometimes I'm up against it, you know, like because a lot of these bands, their catalogs are so big, like I don't know where to start. And so it's just a daunting task, right? Like imagine if you're a kid getting into hardcore in 2024 and like, you know, someone's like, oh, you should check out AF. And that's all they tell you. You know, it's like, how can you attack getting into Agnostic Front in 2024 if you've never heard of them before? So uh, I, I found your list vital. Like this was so nice to like, break into it and uh yeah i think the best thing to do it let, let's just get it started let's give us an overview on uh finnish hardcore what's up dude yeah um so you know i guess i want to say right off the bat like i'm i'm not finnish i didn't live through this stuff like there are people who know way more about it than me so you know um hopefully i'm i'm qualified to give the starter pack version but it's you know you kind of point to a one thing in your, your introduction that this is a a really well-documented scene. Uh, it sort of reminds me of, of DC in that way, like tons of bands released records. Uh, all the bands on this playlist have, you know, multiple records in their discographies. Um, so there's, you know, there's a lot of one and done bands too, but it's just a really like rich scene. Uh, and I, I think it's, it's really unique too. um, some of that, I think, comes from the Finnish language, which often the, the native language will like color, you know, music in general, but certainly punk rock from different places. And, uh, you know, Finnish has a lot of sort of like nasty guttural vowel sounds, a lot of like mm. as and, and hard K's and stuff. So yeah. it's a language that I think is, is really well suited for hardcore. Um, and then another thing I really like about Finnish hardcore is that I think it retained its roots to seventies punk a little bit more. Um, so I think you see that in the bands I chose for the playlist, they're all sort of like, a well, maybe not all of them, but I, I sort of lean toward the, the catchier punkier stuff. And, you know, there's certainly plenty of like really raw, nasty discharge inspired stuff, but I, I like that so many of the great bands like have, have really strong hooks and memorable songs. Yeah, with you saying the scene was so well documented, we should say that a lot of this stuff is is still available. Like there are represses of a lot of it. So that's such a nice thing about this. And also, just as a precursor before we dive in, we are gonna mispronounce everything. So people yeah. don't get at us. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is brutal. So uh, if, we're gonna try our best and and put ourselves out there. Yeah, it's it's one of the toughest things about being into Finnish punk is <laughs> pronouncing things. Yeah, for sure. Let's let's dive right in. So uh, we got the starter kit going. I put a link. A lot of this stuff wasn't on Spotify, but I didn't want to be limited uh, by that for this because we wanted to have the most crucial shit. So I did a YouTube playlist and it is in the show notes and it'll also be linked up tomorrow in the sub stack. Um, so let's just dive right in. What's the first song here, Daniel? Uh, the first song is by uh, Chaos. Uh, the first two songs come from the Chaos Cadgers split seven inch, which is, um, you know, a, a really early record. Uh, it's from from 1981. Um, Chaos is certainly one of the, the best known Finnish hardcore bands, um, partly because uh, their album uh, Havoc Records has kept it in print for certainly the past 15 or 20 years or something. So you can still buy it from like for like 12 bucks from, from havoc. But, uh, this song is from their first release. And to me, it's, it's just 
right out of the gate one of those like examples of how gnarly and aggressive Finnish hardcore gets. It's just nasty, particularly the the vocals. They're just snarling and so pissed. Yeah, yeah. One of, I love this thing because it just it really seems it's 1981 and they're just on par with like their DC counterparts, right? Like maybe not Minor Threat, who's like maybe the greatest band ever, but like this outside of like that first yell and like the the initial little guitar hook, like this could be SOA. Like this is right there. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, and I think a lot of these Finnish bands too, they you know, these records were really early and they kind of got out there. So, you know, I don't know if you've seen, they recently came out with this uh, book about Swedish hardcore called raw punk. And, Mm. you know, the, the Swedish early Swedish bands were getting these Finnish records and I think inspired by them as much as the DC stuff. So it, it really put its stamp on what kind of European hardcore would come to be. Yeah, this is spectacular. This is a great song to kick off. And I love that it's a split to start it with. So let's get into the Cadgers song. Yeah, so Cadgers, um, after this record, they changed their name to Restitute and put out a whole bunch of records. And, you know, Restitute is probably a band you've heard of if you know anything about Finnish punk at all. This is their first release. And, um, you know, they're, I think, a really well-matched band with Chaos. It's It's super gnarly um i think the discharge influence is a little bit more apparent on the the cadger side it's like a little more just like straight discharge and doesn't have that like little bit of sort of punkiness or whatever that i hear in uh chaos but it's you know it's it's raw nasty early 80s hardcore it's basically like the shit i want to hear you know (laughs) yeah it's so over the plate like both these bands this is so good and one of the thing it's funny to be like a an audiophile on like early eighties stuff, but like the snare on this is just so sick. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just super deep. Yeah. The yeah, you know, not everything got a great recording, but a, a lot of stuff did. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of early eighties recordings where they went into a studio and maybe it's it's sort of minimal for a studio setup, but hi fi, you know, compared to a lot of like DIY stuff. Um, and it just it it portrays the bands how they sounded, you know, and it, it, it sounds great. Yeah, yeah. There's there's more to it than just charm though here. Like th- these are like this is really good. This this band is sloppy at this point. But like, yeah, but like, yeah, the spirit is coming through and and I love the recording. Um, Yeah. And, and, you know, both of these bands, they're really, really raw and really direct at this point, but they both put out a whole lot more records and and grow and change a lot. Um, And like Restitute, I think they get better than this. So they're their first LP, um, you know, it kind of continues along that discharge path, like a little heavier, really straightforward and brutal. But then by the time they get to their self- second album, Schizophrenia, it, they bring in a lot more like UK 82 kind of hooky stuff. It almost sounds more like the appendix stuff that's later in the playlist. So, you know, if, if you like this, like definitely continue with the band's discography. They, they just get better. So sick. Okay, let's go back a year to 1980, and I'm not even attempting to pronounce this name. You got to go first. Uh, Tervit Cadet. Uh, so this is a song off of uh, their first EP, Rock La Hausta Vastan. Uh, it's the, about the best I could do. I kind of debated about whether Tervit Cadet or the Chaos Cadger split should come first, because the Tervit Cadet records come a little bit earlier. Um but, you know, me and my friends kind of talk about whether which one of these is kind of the first true Finnish hardcore record. And to me, that first Turvey Cadet EP, it sounds like hardcore to me. Um, you know, n- no one I've said this to has ever agreed with me explicitly. But uh, these first two EPs, they really remind me of teen idols because you can really hear that it's coming from like the first wave of you uk punk but it's like turning up all the knobs it's like oh what if we made it faster crazier more intense and it's it's just really over top over the top like especially the vocals how he's just sort of snarling and like coming off the beat uh it's it's you know 
kind of reminds me of like some of the Italian bands and how it's kind of loose and just nasty. Yeah, it's a good point. Like this is a a 30 second mid tempo song, which just in theory is so sick, right? To keep (laughs) everything so short. And the singer is completely unhinged. You're right. Like this sounds to me like Poison Idea circa 84, you know, four years before that happens. But yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, Yeah, it's wild. um, yeah. And, and this was just a one-sided EP. So it's, you know, it, it's in, incredibly rare, um, but it's a very, it's a very short record. Um, and then the next song I chose is from Araton Julu, which is uh, their 1982 seven inch. And, you know, their Turvit Cadets first two EPs, they're kind of of a piece. Uh, you know, they have a really similar sound and they have that kind of punky energy. And then to me, everything just kind of snaps together on Araton Julu and they almost sort of get in the league of like minor threat to me. The music is more precise. You know, they're kind of executing like really tight, catchy little changes. And and this song has that like cool little lead guitar in it. Um, you know, to me that this is like one of the great international hardcore punk seven inches. Yeah, this is so much more in the pocket. You know, I mean, it's a two year gap, which is, you know, that's light years when you're young, you know, like, yeah, this rips, this rips. And the singer, he, I I do love the first seven inch because his voice is just so in the gutter, you know, but here he's, (laughs) he's making his way out of the gutter. He's not as wild anymore, but like still just a great punk voice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, And I, I suppose I should also mention like, uh, another interesting thing about Turvey Cadet is they're uh, they're really they use a lot of this like dark S and M imagery, and I think I've heard that the the singer is sort of involved in that scene, like beyond just punk. Um, and this this record has a, this really classic cover with the singer like uh, bound up, hung upside down, and there's like a lit candle inserted into his asshole. Um, <laughs> it's 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 pretty crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like that that's part of the UK, you know, that early connection too, right? Sex Pistols, X-Ray Specs, like all that stuff. And Absolutely. and carried on again, like to circle back, like it runs through Poison Idea too, right? Rubber Husband. Of course. There, yeah. There's like zero chance that like Poison Idea, notorious record collectors, like aren't listening to this stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was going to mention that since we mentioned Poison Idea twice already, but like if you read Jerry A's books that just came out, he name checks Finnish hardcore quite a bit. Um, and, you know, particularly Llama, he always mentions as one of his favorite bands. Sick. So we should say that this third Tervik Cadet song uh, I added. So if everyone hates this song and this is an outlier on the catalog, blame me, not Daniel. Um <laughs> But I, I just want this came up when I was shuffling through the stuff and like this song is just some wild ass shit that I love. Right. So it's a 35 second song. It just starts with like a pretty sick, straightforward hardcore riff and then a drum fill and then this short verse. And then it does that like Tom fill again and it just fades on that. Like it's one of the most psycho songs you could come up with. Like I, I would have loved to hear the conversation about like their angle for creating this song. It's just it's fucking wild. Yeah, I'm I'm really curious about that too. Um and I, I think it's a good moment to kind of pluck out too cuz for me uh you know after that third 7-inch Tribute Cadet changes drummers and their their next drummer is a little less groovy um and then the that LP is really really long so it kind of uh it, it kind of gets all mushed up. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't have the same kind of peaks and valleys as the EPs. So it's cool to like pull out a moment that shows them at their best. I think also like one of the things in like the international hardcore scene that, that is different than us HC, like by 1984 is like, it doesn't seem like it says paint by numbers. Like, I don't think you'd see a band, do this like on the u.s side like this is just like a wild ass concept <laughs> so it's so yeah. sick you know wh- one band that i can think of that does it is uh on raw power screams from the gutter one of my favorite moments on that like the music stops and there's this lead guitar break and he like starts yeah. with this crazy bend and it sounds like he's gonna you know go into a crazy solo and then it just you hear them like turn the fader down and it goes yes. off and 100%. it's a very like similar moment that i just like 
what what did they not like about that solo? <laughs> like why they yeah. why they cut it out? It makes me so curious. That's true. Yeah, I mean, like they could have kept recording it, fell apart or something. They just couldn't get through it. I I was friends with this band and like right around 2000 and they were pretty sloppy and went and recorded and it was a time when you couldn't punch in on drums of course and they just they had this song that was just fast for like two minutes so there wasn't like parts that could break it up and they couldn't make it through it and i was like dude just fucking end it with an explosion so they yeah. just edited in like an explosion <laughs> like as some part it's like well that's where the song is sick <laughs> so sick um okay let's go on to radis yeah radis uh so they have a huge discography and they're another really early band. So uh, this track is from their uh, fourth EP, um, Rejoita to Udensota, um, something like that. Um, so their their first two EPs are definitely coming from more of like a 70s punk place. The, the first EP is 79, which is just nuts um but then on this fourth seven inch you you hear them just go full discharge and it's 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 just gnarly um someone was actually telling me the other day that this their one before this uh ratus on rauta which that song is kind of like a, a cockney rejects type like terrace chant i always heard that ratus on rauta means ratus rules <laughs> so mm-hmm. kind of a, a silly thing but apparently they were going for discharge on that record but it didn't quite come together but man it comes together on this record and to me ratus they have one of the most unique sounds. They have this really sort of stiff groove to them that I think when I first heard them kind of turned me off because, you know, I generally like bands that are kind of more in the pocket and and groovier, but they just make it work for themselves. And it has this kind of like almost industrial vibe to it because it's, it's so sort of regimented in its grooves. And then you know, they, they obviously like are taken from like why and hear nothing, see nothing in like the crazy guitar overdubs. Just, you know, that's something they kind of return to again and again on a bunch of their records is just, you know, extended guitar shredding. This first track is so sick. It, it, it's just like in the pocket discharge to me with like, I mean, the thing that makes it unique is there's kind of like flamboyant, like rolled R vocals. I don't know how to describe that. Yeah. But, like he's exactly. very... It, it seems kind of flamboyant, which is like a nice flavor on it. Um, let, th- let's jump forward to uh, the song from 1984. This is so sick because I like when people get more psycho as they age. You know, like yes. <laughs> a lot of like civilians, like, you know, you get softer as you age and, and more friendly and approachable. And, you know, like this is two years after like, the last song that we talked about. And it's just like a 24 second blazing hardcore song. And the singer just like found his way into the gutter. This is so sick. Yeah. I think, I think this is, um, a, a different singer, um, at least for, for part of the song. So, uh, I think, I think between these two records, like their roadie, uh, join them on vocals. And then he, he sings on, uh, the, rat cage LP that, that came out in the U S also. Um, and he, he kind of has that more of that unhinged style that Turvey cadet has. Um, but yeah, they, they really, it, it's funny. Cause like I said, their groove is so tight, but they really get looser in their song structures as they go. Yeah. And they're just more willing to sort of like zone out on a riff and see where it goes. Um, you know, you, I think they're taking a lot from like the reprise of why on that 12 inch, you know, that it's almost sort of where discharge almost pushes into like a psychedelic kind of sure. uh, arena. Yeah. 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 Okay. Let's go on to llama. Yeah. So llama, you know, I, I kind of always cite them as my favorite Finnish hardcore bands. Um, and you know, me and one of my friends, we were talking and he kind of doesn't even really consider llama hardcore. <laughs> um, he's like, they're, they're just punk, you know, and maybe they are, but they, you know, they're another, again, very early. Their first seven inch came out in 1980. Um, and this, which song did we put first? Uh, uh, well, okay. So this is another mistake. Uh, or actually I think we can both take a uh, responsibility for this mistake. So you made a typo in one of your emails to me. And so I put right. on the Jesus song and the second song. And uh, yeah. by the time you said you didn't want the Jesus song, I was too pot committed. 
So I was like, <laughs> we got to roll with it. And, and it's kind of cool because it is a little different. Yeah, there's certainly different songs. You know, Tava Yusta is maybe not a representative Llama song because it's it's so much faster than right. their other songs. And it's, it's really hardcore. Um, both of those come from their... LP, which is 1982, I guess. And, uh, you know, I guess they, they do still have a lot of that, like UK punk hookiness in them. But to me, they always reminded me a little of minor threat. They have a lot of like, you know, just kind of delicate, uh, I guess arrangements, like little stops and starts and kind of flourishes that like, uh, really like sink the hooks in, um, and make the songs really pop. I think you you hear that on these, but then on the song Posca, the next track, um, t- that's like one of my favorite Finnish hardcore songs. It's it's so anthemic and it, it's just it's great. Sick. Yeah, let me jump into the two off the twelve inch first. Like the first one, the Jesus song, the verse to me again. I, I'm seeming like I don't have that many reference points, but this just reminds me of eighty four Poison Idea which is so sick. And then the chorus, why I wanted to keep this on the playlist too, is it's weird in it's like anthemic nature. Like it's not like a, you know, like a, a shouty, like a soccer match chant. It's more like, it reminds me a lot of like that earth ball sports tournament paint box, like LP. Interesting. You know, like this seems like they listen to this. Like it's, it's very anthemic in a weird strange way that like I've only really heard on that stuff. Um, so I don't know. I just wanted to name check that because it's, it's kind of a weird reference point. And, and obviously like, you know, paint box fan of the genre, <laughs> you know I mean? There's no <laughs> way they hadn't heard llama. Um, For sure. And then on the second track, like the fast one, I wanted to just note, like it's pretty long for yeah. like a hardcore song It's two minutes and 30 seconds. And how it seems to me is like, it's just like a UK 82 song, like on speed, right? Like yeah. in the way that they just take one riff and milk the hell out of it and just, you know, turn it up to 11. Like it is so sick. And like the way they do that little break in the middle of the song, like you think it's over and they just come back in. They're like, we're only halfway done, bitches. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's so sick, dude. I love this. Um, let's go on to the next one off the, uh, the 81 seven inch, the Pasco song. Yeah. I'm, I mean, you know, it's just, it's a sing-along, you know, Pasca, Pasca. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, you know, like you were saying, I think there is a lot of like UK 82 in this. And like a lot of those bands, um, there's a really sort of good, simple song at the core of it. And then it seems like they devote their energy as a band to sort of amplifying that and sort of, you know, making sure each part kind of hits with the impact that it should. It's just a masterpiece of a song, I think. Yeah, for the top 100 hardcore songs of the 80s, I pulled the title track off this record because it is just so tuneful. And like, yeah. that's maybe my favorite shit is just when you have like these tuneful yet dirty songs. Um, yeah. Yeah, I love this so much. And and for everyone, if Google Translate is correct, Pasca is shit. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah, U- Turvy Cadet. Turvy Cadet has a, a song called Pisa Ja Pasca, uh, Piss and Shit. And ah. They, they rec- recently made some like underpants that they've screen printed Pisa Ja Pasca <laughs> on, oh, on the butt. <laughs> Very punk. Okay, let's go on to yeah. Appendix. This is the one band on this list that I had never heard of, and I think it's my favorite. Oh, I, I love Appendix. Um, you know, I th- maybe some people who are... Uh, you know, have a different relationship with this to me would, would think it's like a slightly left field pick. It's, it's much later than the other records, but from the moment I heard appendix, I was just in love there. I mean, they sound like just a totally classic punk band with all the energy of hardcore. Um, their vocal melodies are so good and their, their riffs are so hooky. They're just, um, yeah, they're just great they they put out two lps and a seven inch and the whole discography is is just gold um and they, also they just uh recently toured uh in the u.s and i got to see them twice and they were great they sounded wow. exactly like the records 
it was it was killer and it, these these old finnish guys um one of the shows was outside and they're all like smoking cigarettes while they're playing and taking shots between songs and stuff it was it was so sick <laughs> <laughs> that rules uh jump into the first song yeah hora is um it it's kind of the anthem i think of the appendix catalog they made it the the a side of their seven inch um i i think hora means whore so it's it's maybe not politically my favorite song but it's just it's so catchy and it has a kind of like blitz s quality to it i think yeah. um it's kind of you know mid-paced and and in the pocket and like the bass line is super strong um just a really great anthemic punk song yeah i mean they could be calling politician horrors who knows so uh yeah. we'll just go with that uh <laughs> yeah it is a total mid-tempo banger and i just wanted to note how bright yet savage this recording is like this thing just sounds great yeah so, uh, it, uh, all, all three of the records have really strong recordings like a big kind of martial type guitar sound um which really works well for them hell yeah let's wrap up on uh, a song off their 12 inch from 82 yeah so this is the first song uh kuatinkin kulame um off of their first lp uh it originally came out in finland and then um it came out with an english title money is not my currency that's another reason i think a lot of finnish stuff kind of got around in the 80s is uh propaganda records had a licensing agreement with rocco rama in germany so a lot of these records got repressed in german editions and then i think rocco rama had pretty good distribution in the u.s so a lot of people were hearing this at the time but um yeah, this this song I I just love this riff. The like it's you know just a simple like single string thing, but it's it just sticks in your head. It's to me it's like a just a great album opener. I've always loved this song. There was also a dude in San Diego, I don't have his name right now, but uh he ran a thing called Bad Compilation Tapes yeah. in the early 80s and he distroed a lot of the finished stuff too. Yeah. So uh Shout out to yeah. him. I got to yeah, get Chris, him on the pod at some I point. Don't remember, don't remember his last name, but yeah, BCT is huge. Very important. Um, okay, so let's go into the that last song here. This one to me uh, was pretty sick that you pulled because, you know, a lot of the D-Beat stuff, it gets name checked as like having heavy motorhead influence, which is true. But sometimes I feel like you have to squint to see it. This mm -hmm. is like, this is just motorhead to me. It's so sick. Oh, Oh yeah, that riff is total like Ace of Spades. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love this thing. What do you love about this? Yeah, it's it, to me. It's just it. It has such a strong melody. Um, you know, it, it. And even though I don't know Finnish at all, like I, I can sing Kulik. What is it? Kulik Tanken Kulume. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, it, it's it's gibberish to me, but like it's tattooed on my brain um yeah yeah and I, I love like the you know where the guitar intros coming in and the vocalist just goes whoa <laughs> you yeah. know kind of sets it off like it's yeah great stuff daniel i think you did a great job like for me personally it was so nice you plucking off these tracks like i said on the front end um really giving me a place to start because now I I have my favorite songs off here and I can like dig into those albums first. This has always been a pretty big blind spot for me and I've been looking for someone to uh, to hit me to it more so. And uh, yeah, I just think you did a great job. Do you have any final thoughts on uh, this first wave of Finnish hardcore? Yeah. Um, well, one thing I we didn't really talk about is that there's a lot of great compilations that came out in the 80s of, of Finnish hardcore. So you know, if you, you're kind of looking for your next steps after this, there's the Russia Bombs Finland compilation. There's another one called Yalta High Life and uh, another one called Finnish Spunk and Hard Beat. Um, these are all like, you know, they have a lot of these bands and then a lot of smaller bands that will sort of lead you down various rabbit holes. Um, and then particularly if you like the more kind of discharge inspired end of this stuff um there's a bootleg compilation called fin killed by finnish hardcore that came out in maybe like the early 2010s that is you know it's wall-to-wall -wall bangers and has a lot of really 
super obscure bands. So this is this is a very deep scene. So if if you hear stuff you like here, um, you know, dive in because there's so much more great stuff to hear. I love it. Thanks so much for your help, Daniel. Yeah, thank you. Everyone, handle business because half this stuff is available at Sorry State Records. So sorrystaterecords.com, I believe. Is that correct? Yep. Sorrystaterecords.com. I know you can get that Llama discography, which uh, is essential for the collection. So handle business, people. Thanks, Daniel. (laughs) 